things off here. Um, Very good. Bobo, yeah, Bob, I'll hand it over to you and then okay. you can hand me the baton. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Bob Fry. I am with SNL oh, International. Um, SNL International is an IT consulting and services firm. We're based out of uh, Arcadia, California. We serve uh, Los Angeles and Orange County, and we help uh, organizations implement IT solutions to uh, improve their business profitability. Uh, we are we we focus in in three basic areas so systems and network infrastructure so systems com, you know computers servers workstations etc uh, and ov obviously all the software that goes along with it Microsoft VMware etc and then network infrastructure routing switching firewalls uh, access points etc then of course da data security you know securing your data which is the big big buzz today, which is why we're on. We're very excited about having a, a partnership with Palo Alto because they're the best security vendor in the, in the marketplace today. But whether you're securing your data internally, externally, in the cloud, uh, it's, it's at the forefront it needs to do today. And so we obviously play in that silo. And then the last uh, silo would be uh, data protection. So backup, recovery, disaster recovery, and that type of thing. Uh, our our uh, differentiator is truly the SNL engineering team, and I hit on it earlier. So we have, you know, 12 engineers on staff, and I put those engineers in the same buckets as you know uh, the first bullet: systems engineers, so uh, you know servers, workstations, Microsoft, VMware, etc., uh, and obviously security products, and then. Uh, network engineers, r r engineers that work on routers and switches and firewalls and and uh, cloud security, et cetera. Uh, that is our differentiator. And uh, um, we've worked very closely with uh, with uh, the Palo Alto folks to get the custom solutions. Everybody's everybody's security requirements are different. Uh, and so you need a custom solution. Uh, we provide ongoing support and good customer relationships. We build the relationships. The engineers not only have Palo Alto or other industry certifications, but more importantly, they have experience, real world experience. So, and with that, we've got, we have great world experience with the Palo Alto product. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to the Palo Alto team. Tom, take it away. Yeah. Thanks so much, Bob. I really appreciate it. I, uh, I will say this about SNL, uh, Thomas, Lee, and myself have been working with directly with SNL for a number of years. It's a great group of individuals, Jim, Bob, Laura, Heidi, Sean, Tom Murphy. Um, and you, for me, you, you, you nailed it, Bob. And, and when you say your your staff of engineers, um, so I, I simply view SNL as an extension of Palo Alto Networks. Um, they are a highly, highly proficient uh, value added reseller. Um, I think what really strikes me about SNL as unique and different from other value added resellers is the fact that they, they believe in starting with the customer and of course, working backwards, not the other way around. And they work vigorously to, to not only earn our customer's trust, but retain it as well. And I think that's, that's paramount. Um, so I think I was, I was, uh. I put the car before the horse a little bit. My, my name is Tom Cochran. Um, I handle the business operations for. Uh, a number of customers here from a Palo Alto Networks perspective here in Southern California. Uh, Thomas Lee is on the line as well. We've worked together for a number of years, sort of sort of partners in crime, if you will. And we uh, we've developed a, a cadence uh, during the last, or I should say, over the last about two two and a half years of uh, doing these these we'll call them monthly webinars with SNL, and our customers have uh, have very much appreciated them. So uh, naturally, it, it makes sense to continue them. Um, with that said, today's today's topic is really centered around the the latest release of Palo's Palo's 400 boxes. Um, and quite quite candidly, over the last oh, we'll call it four to five years, our customers have have really asked us for more or less a, a branch unit box that's that's more affordable. Um, 
And it's one thing to be affordable, but they've also also actually asked for it to, to handle significantly more throughput. Um, and I think that really what that stems from is just, just bandwidth being heck dirt cheap, right? Um, Thomas, Thomas Lee is, and Bob have heard me say this a hundred times, but it's like you, you can get a gig pipe or two gigs, three gigs for what, almost like a T1 or 20 megs or a DS3 went for four or five years ago, right? Um, and I think inherently speaking, the challenge there becomes um, you, you, you've either got to you've either got to choose between um, something pretty pricey to the tune of maybe 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars to support that additional throughput or that addu- ad- additional link speed. Um, or conversely, if you get something like a, a legacy 220, I don't even say legacy 220 because they're still still uh, they're not even end of sale, but um, We'll say we'll call it more something more inexpensive like the 220. Well, now now the bottleneck in your network is is your firewall, right? It's particularly if you've upgraded your link speed. So the, the the really great news with the 400 series is it offers significantly more more performance. Um, the boot times are are lightning fast, and the devices are more or less cost neutral to the to the 220s. So it kind of it's kind of like utopia in many ways, right? A um, little bit of background before I before I hand it off or defer to, to Thomas, and we kind of talk ones ones and zeros and bits and bytes. Well, one of the reasons Powell has, has brought these 400 units to the market is that we do we do value our customer feedback. It's it's not a, just about the additional throughput, right? What we've been hearing from our customers is that a lot of their branch sites can be pretty remote, and they can be in places that are difficult to, to configure boxes. So what's really, really nice about the 400 series is it comes with zero touch provisioning. And given, given the, the limited IT resources at a normal branch site, zero touch provisioning can be pretty crucial. Um, so in short, um, just kind of a, a definition of zero touch provisioning, it's, I'm sure some of you folks have, have heard it. It's, it's a buzzword out there with Gartner, IDC, Forrester, kind of the usual suspects, but what it really allows you to do is uh, configure configure a, a, a box automatically with minimal need for, for human intervention. So typically uh, an organization would, would send a box to a branch site and in order to make a change or configure that box, your network engineer has to use essentially the CLI by, by inputting commands. Um, so it's a little bit of more of an arduous process than candidly one would like. Um, and if there's multiple, multiple devices, that network admin is going to have to do significantly more work. So with zero touch revisioning, all you really do is rack stack IP, you cable the box, you power up and you're off to the races. So rather than using that command line interface, well, you're now using a UI that uses scripts and code. So you can push out the configuration policies and you're doing that in a much more standardized fashion with the central management console via Panorama. Um, so you, you ship a box. It plugs into the data port. The rest is really done by the software in place. Um, so I know Thomas, you're probably uh, you're probably grinning because I'm I'm guilty of doing this a lot, and I don't want to th- steal your thunder. But I would thunder, but I don't. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention one more thing about the 400 series, and and it's so near and dear to our heart to as as Palo Alto Networks to garner that feedback, that direct feedback from our customers. And the last thing I will say is. Business continuity and disaster recovery is is a uh, is extremely top of mind for many of our more many of our customers today, and I mentioned this because the 400 series was was really designed to be especially resilient in order to keep it operational to reduce mean time between failures. So, what's nice is the design's fanless, which means there's no moving parts. Um, and I, Thomas, I won't steal any more of your thunder because I know you're probably going to talk about the dual power supplies. Um, sure. So I already feel like I, I kind of had had like word vomit here and I said too much. So I'll put a muzzle on myself. Um, Thomas, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. And Thomas, I know I'm sharing right now. So uh, simply simply let me know I'll, I'll, where you want me to drive and, and uh, we'll go from there. And yeah. Then, by the way, and by, by the way, sorry, Thomas, I think one time one thing we didn't mention was this is naturally meant to, to be interactive in nature, folks. So feel free to input a question into the chat. What we'll do at the conclusion of this call is we'll field all of those questions um, and then we can address them at that juncture. 
Um, so that said, uh, Thomas, feel free to take the reins, my friend. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Sam. Um, my name is Thomas Lee. I'm the assistant engineer for Palo Alto, uh, covering the LA territory. But just a little brief history here, uh, just kind of going way back. SNL and I actually have a long, long history. We probably, uh, I've actually worked with uh, Sham and the team since 2000. I'm kind of dating my stuff a little bit. So over 20 plus years here uh, with SNL. So there are definitely my go-to guy uh, you know for pretty much all the IT needs but security is definitely a forefront here for us so just kind of getting back a little bit here in terms of the 400 series so with the with the introduction of you know this is very much of a branch play if you will from a hardware perspective but nevertheless customers still utilize these boxes for some of the larger sites you know you can even deem these some some of these sites can go into you know, more heavily hated uh, 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 sites. I'll go into the you know speeds and feed in a little bit, but nevertheless, these devices are introduced. And one of the, one of the things that some, some of the callouts that, that you know we want to talk about is definitely is that the feature sets on these devices in terms of the software doesn't change, right? Uh, the 10.0 code it does run on 10.1 code. So from a management perspective, as long as your panorama is running you know 10.1 code um, you, when you fire these boxes up basically the, with zero touch provisioning you plug it into the network or discover panorama and panorama takes control of it and of course from a zero you know from a configuration and a deployment perspective makes things a lot simpler right so this is what this slide is about can you advance the next slide yeah certainly so this is where they're talking about in terms of Tom was talking about in terms of, you know, from a branch level perspective, there's still a lot of data out there that are sensitive uh, to the customer. So, you know, of course, with the 400 series, by default, these boxes are shipped with 10.1 10 code. So it has the latest code uh, for the hardware itself. But of course, all the stuff that comes with 10, uh, 10, 10 code, right, which includes some of the security uh, uh, sort of services that are cloud, de uh, cloud delivered, right? So given the limited resources that we have, even given today, especially today's with the, you know, with the situation the world is in right now, so deploying a unit on uh, branches is extremely difficult. So now you can, if you need to, you can drop these boxes out relatively quickly, right? Um, you know, yeah, th that's next up, beautiful. So couple with, the, no, just to stay Oops. with the, with the previous. Yeah, I got, I got overzealous. You got a little bit of a so. This is a good slide here. Um, it besides the 400 series, and it, this is the first glance of these. When we the, the the reason why we call it a series is because there's multiple models here, right? There are essentially four models, but on top, you know, and besides the hardware piece, just want to sort of um, sort of train our eyes into the the two the left uh, the, on the top the middle tier where you look at the advanced URL the DNS piece of it. So uh, the advanced URL actually also in, introduced about the same time as the uh, 400 series. So those are definitely new features that are cloud deliver and they're tying it with the 400 series. It's just extremely important to have that because the standard URL that we talked about all, you know, it's been in Falda for some time. The difference between the advanced URL is that it, and the standard URLs is that the advanced URL is a lot more advanced in the sense that it, it's, not, it's not based on a static, a database, right? The advanced URL uh, uh, is more designed to consume a little bit resources in terms of uh, in terms of what we need, but we categorize now the internet pretty much using AI, right? So um, this is a, a, a definitely a new advanced feature that was added onto uh, uh, and in time with the 400 series release. Um, go ahead, if you don't mind, advancing the next slide. Yeah. So here's kind of the architecture for the hardware piece, right? Um, we sort of talked a little bit about it uh, earlier, but these devices are very much of a wall mount type of thing. Uh, from a performance perspective, you're uh, literally, we, we've seen it in the field uh, where actual performance might vary, but nevertheless, we've seen easily as much as 10x you know, in performance compared to the other, the 400 C, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, in comparison in, into the 220 series. And of course, you know, a lot of folks love this one here is in terms of boot up time, right? You know, of just a quick comparison, we're talking about five times uh, the boot up time. You know, if the box somehow lose power, boots up, it takes, 
I've been tough probably about five minutes, you know, less than five minutes for the box to come out. Commit time is a lot faster. And I'll go into why we're getting these performance. So of course, it's going to be, you know, more better hardware, right? Um, um, the other one is um, no fan, uh, no moving parts. Uh, um, and which is kind of nice if you have to drop, you know, some of these enterprise uh, locations, uh, branch locations, you know, typically sometimes, you know, you, there's really not much of an environment for it to be in, right? So these boxes can literally sit next to someone and you can you run it and you won't have an issue there, right? Um, from a power redundancy perspective, um, so, you know, obviously so these boxes do have uh, dual power supply with the exception of 410, right? So what this slide talks about is really, it gives the customer lower TCO on, uh, on these boxes. Of course, performance, uh, you know, we're looking about, you know, anything from 500 meg to about 2.6 gigs in threat prevention. Uh, that's, that's, that's massive, right, for a little tiny box, right? Um, so it's definitely optimized to deploy in the branch side, right? Um, go ahead if you don't mind, uh, advance another slide, please. So here's kind of like, so we call this, so this is not, this is definitely a new model. Um, so the PA220 is still uh, very current, uh, still relevant. Uh, obviously, uh, with the 400 series, this is the gap between the 220 and of course the eight the 800 series right so this these this series kind of hit right in the middle of it now um i w do want to call out that the 410 um there's a big differentiator and then of course even the color is a little different in the sense that the 410 doesn't have any uh hard drive so all the logging uh capability actually gets uh, forward into panorama or into the cloud for logging uh purposes right um, and then as you move up in scale, and I believe that unit there only has a single power supply. And then of course the remaining four, four, the 440, four, the 450 and the 460, as you move up in there, obviously you're looking, even the chassis is, is identical. However, inside the internal piece where CPU and memory, they're gonna be a uh, pretty, pretty significant uh, differentiation in, in those boxes, right? So far, uh, if there's any questions, please, you know, uh, you know, throw them in uh, the chat window and we can definitely go from there. Um, go ahead, um, advance the slide, please. Thanks. A, yeah, there you go. So now just look, this is a different different view in terms of when you look at a performance. So you look at. Uh, you know, uh, on device logging, uh, which means that it only goes from the 400, the 440 all the way to 460, right? We then empower supply, higher performance, scalability, the whole nine yard. Uh, and then of course, zero touch provisioning is a big piece. These box come default uh, in terms of, you know, um, I know the previous boxes when you order, if a customer orders a box, you're gonna have to decide between a ZTP box and a non-ZPT box. These boxes come to default as a ZPT box, which means that you, you you turn it on automatically if you have Panorama set up. It already discovered that. Um, go ahead. Um, you don't mind? Yes. And th this is a different, you know, from a transition perspective. You're going from a you know PA220 to the four uh, four or four hundred series. Typically, when you want to go to this type of um, sort of specs. Is when you want to when you'd want to do an upgrade, you want to look at you know internet. Obviously, uh, bandwidth is relatively inexpensive to the branch level, right? So, you know, even at home, you can get a gig of uh, internet access. You know, relatively inexpensive, right? So, when you have a need for it, you can pretty much bet on that. You know, you're gonna probably you know start with a four four hundred series, and just because one throughput wise, two. It's management, uh, uh, the management uh, of the box in terms of its performance. Um, these are really great specs here. Right? Um, go ahead and advance to the next slide. So the now this is, this is just the different mounting options. A lot of our customer base always talk about you know when they buy a PA220, they want to look at how they mount these boxes. So, so we got a lot of options here that you can. Uh, uh, you know, use to mount whether you if you want to mount it in a two post, four post, or essentially uh, tag it onto a wall. You can do that, right? So we have 
uh, various different mounting options. Um, next slide, please. And, and Thomas, are you looking yeah. for a specific yeah. slide? Yeah, the slide that I'm looking for is uh, 15, uh, 16, and 17. It's really gotcha. the next two slides gotcha. that should gotcha. be there. Um, so I think you know most people really want to you know that especially the technical folks on the on the call they really want to let know what's under the hood right uh, and here's what we're talking about you know from the 460 it, it's, this is the meat uh, and the heart and the soul of the box right if you look at in terms of why and how we're gaining these uh, numbers right so essentially you're gonna get more cores uh, uh, and then of course more memory if you will right core and and the compute power drives you know performance and throughputs right so this is what you're talking about uh, it's the force the 460 and you know, 450 yeah the the cores you know the, it's quite a bit right you know from four to uh, I'm, I'm sorry from 68 uh that's that's massive right and then of course you're looking at the uh, that's just for the control point and the data point if you look at the data point inside the house those are pretty pretty massive right um, and the next one's just remaining uh, talks about, uh, if you don't mind, um, yeah, the 17, there is, there's a 410 and a 440, and if you look at the 410 and 440, even uh, the data plane uh, and uh, which and the control plane are separate, right? The PA220 unfortunately shares, you know, essentially uh, a pair of, uh, of um, I believe they're, they share a pair of dual cores, right? now. When we talk about managing these new bot devices, the control plane and, and the data plane gets their own CPU, right? So that's how we can gain performance there. Anyway, the, these are the technical specs uh, of uh, these devices, and they are uh, definitely shippable. Uh, I think, Tom, maybe you can correct me on this one here, but the 410 should be available by the end of this month, right? That is correct. Yeah, so that's with the exception of that, the 410 and everything else is shipped over. Yeah, anyway, um, and just and the other thing I will note, and this isn't unique or exclusive to the 400 series, but folks out there, if you do need a, a device uh, quickly, please plan accordingly. Uh, as you know, not specific to Palo Alto Networks, but there is a chip shortage and we are uh, we are feeling the pain, not uh, unlike any other any other vendor out there or OEM. So please can plan accordingly. You're looking at anywhere from an eight to an 11 week lead time, dependent, or I should say, depending on what model. Um, and the the 400 series is no different. But hypothetically speaking, if you uh, if you want a 410, uh, those are those are available at the end of this month, like Thomas said, which we're looking at 923. So I think that it's actually uh, early next week. So, um, well. I think uh, that was that was nice and concise and succinct. Um, we want to be uh, uh, mindful of everyone's time. But that said, um, why don't we field some questions? I don't have visibility to the questions. I believe that either went to uh, to Bob or Heidi or maybe even Joel. So do we want to do, uh, do we want to field those? Sure. Okay. So I see that there's one question from. No, Acosta. I'm sorry about that. Um, they asked for the 100 to 50 users branch with normal internet usage and heave Zoom usage, but not intense. Which box do you recommend? Uh, what's the bandwidth? Uh, if you if you look at the bandwidth piece of it, I mean those all those boxes will fit, but it's you know you got a couple hundred users there, and you know you know hundred less than one hundred fifty users, right? So typically, I you know it depends on the bandwidth, but I would bare you know at the bare minimum start at the four forty. Uh, the four ten uh, one uh, availability is not shippable yet until the end of the month, but the four ten the reason I'm staying away from the four ten piece of it. It's that, you know, obviously, you know, you still want some local storage, right? Unless you have a, uh, a panorama and, uh, and all that, then I, then I would definitely look at the 410. If not, I would definitely start with the 440 and that should be the right box for you. The next question we got for, is from Chris. Um, not sure which company he's, he's logging in from but um his question was will the pa2200 uh go away the two to, uh, the 220 so as as at this time uh we have not gotten any indication that that unit's going away 
Uh, I'm sure like anything else, at one point in time, uh, those PA220 uh, has been out there for some time already. So they're probably gonna you know, do for a refresh, but don't quote me on that one there yet. We have not heard anything that is official. Uh, and we still have a lot of customers that are actually signing up for that unit. That, that, that unit, it's a tank. It's been out there for some time. And then of course, you know, myself, I'm actually running in, in my office all the way to, you know, have customers that have hundreds of these boxes, right? If not thousands. So the, the yeah, days, just, they're yeah, still just, there. just to be clear that there, there has not been an end of sale date announced for the 220. So in terms of depreciation schedule or sunsetting that you still have some time. Um, however, if you were going to hypothetically making net new purchase, we would we would recommend one of the 400 series boxes for all the, the reasons outlined, like it's cost neutral to the 220, um, that's far more throughput, et cetera, et cetera. Just the management piece of yeah. love, I, yeah. I would also hope. Good times, yeah. Just to give you everyone uh, some context, yeah, as an engineer at Palo Alto, I've been requesting these 440. They have not entertained that option yet to ship one to the engineers just because the customers you know are going to take precedent over us right so i bet i would love to get a box uh you know at least put my hand on one of those things and the next question is from john Lickeb. sorry about that um does snl offer any managed services for palo alto depends so we could get more into that, what we can do is uh, contact you offline to get into more details about that. If that's OK, John. And the next question is from Roger Gagnon. Uh, any stats on the GP through uh, through put and connections? Ooh, oh, you sorry, the flow, throughout the, the connections for the 400 series gear? Uh, actually, there, there is, but I okay. don't have and it. Then, uh, and then you, there's additional question on top of that. Can you compare stats with the 300 series gear too? The 300, that's that's definitely an old box. That's yeah. been, uh, I don't have to, uh, unfortunately, I don't know the 300 uh, specs, uh, uh, but from a threat prevention perspective, these are the raw, uh, not raw numbers. These are these numbers are tested, and we actually have seen. And, and as a matter of fact, I even have a customer uh, last week call me up and ask me and try to verify whether these stats are correct because they're seeing a tremendous. Like, give, let me give you an example. The PA four forty, where our threat prevention is a nine hundred meg, right? And nine hundred meg, it, it's not per interface; it's the entire box, right? One of the one of my customers, really big customers, are actually testing these things with their own performance numbers, and they're seeing greater than that, way greater than that. So you know, the customer actually did a uh, you know asked me to jump on the call and explain those why you know seeing such a great performance, and they were th thought that their their tools were not reporting correctly. So the numbers are are correct there. This those those are you are probably at minimum. Those are the the, the numbers you're going to get. So uh, Thomas, I, I I don't want to interject, but beg your pardon here. I suspect that that individual probably meant the three thousand series, or maybe just uh, mistakenly fat fingered it, which I do all the time. Um, so I think it's you, that individual is probably referring to these. So I pulled up the three thousand series specs. Um, yeah. Here we yeah, go. Yeah. So I, you're I, looking I, at. Oh, I'm sorry, Thomas. Go ahead. No, 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 no. no. I, I would I would do the following is. I wouldn't compare those if if, it, if it's meant for three thousand, meaning the thirty two hundred series and the thirty two fifty. The the intent of the four hundred series is not to compare that with the three thousand series, just because from a hardware perspective, these the three thousands are really more of an entry level for the data center side, and the the four hundred series are more for the branch side, if you will. Yes, you can Can you deploy it in a small data center? Absolutely. It runs the same operating system, runs has the same, you know, uh, security feature sets, everything is, is warranted. But the from a hardware and actual hardware perspective, I wouldn't compare the two together. I would, yeah, however. 
Thomas, uh, can you also talk about the fiber connectivity component too? I think that's a pretty critical. That that's exactly it. So okay, cool. the, the the thanks that that's a great reminder. I should have called that out earlier. Is that the, there's a uh, uh, um, one significant uh, uh, difference there in terms of the call out is the interfaces on the 400 series are all copper. They don't have any fiber. So if you want any fiber connection you would have to go with the 800 series or the 3000 series. I know the PA220, the R version, has an SFP that you can actually mount a, fa a, a, a fiber to it, but the 800 series do not have any fiber connectivity. Hopefully that makes sense. Yes, um, he said that you have explained it and thank you. And I think there was another question, but it seems like Joel answered it. Just just in case, I'll just put it out there. Is Panorama required to manage the 400 series? No, it, it's not, absolutely not a requirement. These boxes can be managed independently. Uh, they're just no different from the existing uh, PA220 or any of the 3000 or you know, A7000 series, right? They can be managed independently or they can be managed, you know, using a centralized platform like Panorama so that you can, you know, you, you, when you have a lot of these boxes, uh, anything above five units, you should have a, some sort of centralized management. Thank you. It seems like we got most of the, <clears throat> sorry about that, but it seems like we answers all the questions that are out there. If there's any more questions, please feel free to put it in the chat box, but it seems like it's all done. <laughs> so we could kind of wrap it up from here. All right, uh, I'll turn it back to you, Tom. Yeah, everyone, thank you so much. We greatly appreciate it. I think this was time well spent. And um, I believe it to be beneficial. So should any questions arise, feel free to reach out to SNL or, or us directly. Um, and have a wonderful day, folks. We look forward to supporting you moving forward. Thanks, everyone. Bye yeah. now. Cheers. Bye.